Hello everyone, let's talk about kennel calf today. When I speak to people about this problem, I am often under the impression that many believe that kennel calf is a simple disease, a disease that is caused by one pathogenome that maybe has only a single origin. However, kennel calf is way more complex than that. Uh, it's what we call a syndrome in veterinary medicine. It causes a very specific group of clinical signs, typically dry and fitful calf in dogs, but those symptoms can be caused not by one, not by two, but by several pathogens that can act alone all together to make things even more complicated. It is not about a single bacteria or a single virus. Many, many pathogens can be involved. And as I said, the list can go on and on. There are viruses for sure that can be involved in kennel calf. And look at the list. I'm sure some of those names Sound, sound, sound familiar, like the canine parainfluenza virus. This is the most common cause of kennel calf worldwide. The canine adenovirus type 2. The canine distemper virus. I think this one is important to mention as well because, you know, we always... Um, I was told that distemper was a disease from the past, but we know today that canine distemper is considered as a re-emerging disease and sometimes it will cause kennel cough-like symptoms. So always something to keep in mind, especially if you deal with a dog collectivity like a kennel, especially. So there are viruses, there are bacteria also that can cause kennel cough. And again, the, the list is long here. Uh, I think one which is very important and that everybody knows is the one called Bordetella bronchiseptica. This one is the most common bacterial cause of kennel calf worldwide. But you can see, bacteria, there are other bacteria that can cause kennel calf as well. And if you work in a kennel or if you are involved in a kennel, you need to know that parasites also can cause kennel calf. And it's not something common, I agree, I'll give you that. But sometimes some parasites like Capillaria or Oslerus, which are parasites that, will, that live, in fact, in the airways, can create symptoms which are kennel calf-like. So, you see, kennel calf is not about a single pathogen. There are many, many pathogens involved. So, okay, you've seen the list. You understand now that kennel calf is a very complex disease. But did you notice the new kids on the block? No? Let's go back to them. Canine influenza virus. Yes, dogs have their own influenza virus. It originated from a mutation from a horse virus. And we know that last year in the US, it caused an outbreak. It started in Chicago and then it spread all across the country. So today, this is something veterinarians really focus on because even if usually it causes mild symptoms, exactly like in humans, sometimes canine influenza can be deadly, especially when dealing with immunocompromised dogs. Canine respiratory virus, respiratory coronavirus, sorry. Have you heard about this one? It was first identified in 2003 in England and then uh, many studies reported it all across the world. It seems to be a very very common pathogen when it comes to respiratory diseases in dogs. However, its mo mode of action uh, is not really well understood today. Uh, does it act alone or is it something, is it like a co-infection with other pathogens? We don't really know, but clearly today it is described as a growing cause of respiratory disorders in dogs. And the last one, canine pneumovirus. This one was identified in 2010. Again, same thing. We're not really sure if uh, oh, this virus plays a role in kennel calf, and but the thing is, it is isolated from dogs that suffer from kennel calf. Today, where the new PCR panels look for this virus. So there are certainly many, many new things to learn about this one, but keep his name in mind because this is something we look for today. And there's one in particular I want to mention in the bacteria group. So mycoplasma is something we often hear of. It's often qualified as an opportunistic pathogen 
it causes it, it, there's something creating a problem in the respiratory tract and mycoplasmas are here and they will increase the severity of the disease so uh, today we know that they can be involved in kennel calf as well but the one i really want to mention is this one streptococcus equi subspecies or epidermicus that's a complicated name i agree but this one, you know, usually when we speak about kennel calf, all those pathogens, they usually cause mild symptoms. This one, Streptococcus, is deadly. When dogs suffer from a Streptococcus equi subspecies or epidermicus infection, typically it will cause an hemorrhagic pneumonia that will basically lead to the death of the animal. So very, we don't know much about this one. It has, it has been isolated in the US, in Korea and in the UK. So we know it's worldwide. And again, this is something to keep on the radar because we don't know much, We know, but we know this one can be deadly, unfortunately. Okay, that's it guys. That's what I wanted to tell you today on kennel calf. I hope now that you have a better understanding of the number of different pathogens that can be involved in this syndrome. So thank you very much for listening to this short video and I hope to see you soon on the web or anywhere else. Bye bye!